Hey everyone, I'm Kevin with JCR Off-Road. In this video, we're gonna be installing our roof rack for the soft top equipped Ford Broncos. Now, as you can see, we've kind of got all the parts laid out here that you're gonna receive. This is a pretty good place to start just so you can make sure you have everything you're gonna need. And then we'll begin this installation by installing these rear uprights, beginning with their lower mounting brackets. Now before these rear lower mounting brackets can be installed, you're gonna to wanna to find the adhesive backed rubber pad and get it installed here to the bracket on this face where it could come in contact with the painted quarter panel surface. Now this is gonna be pretty easy to install. You're just gonna to wanna to look for the corresponding cutouts here that align with the cutouts on the bracket. And you can kinda of quick just check to make sure everything looks right here. But what you're going to be looking for is basically about an eighth of an inch relief all the way around between the pad and the edge of the bracket. Just make sure that it looks centered on this surface is kind of the most critical thing. And then start at one end or one corner, peeling this backer and getting it adhered to the bracket. Once you have that in place on both the driver and passenger bracket, you can move up here to the soft top on the vehicle and remove both of these rear side windows and then just lift up and prop up the back of your soft top. Now these brackets are going to install using the three upper quarter panel mounting screws, one of which you can't really see right now because it's still tucked under this front bracket. So obviously propping this up has revealed the back two. For the front, you're going to need a T30 Torx. There's gonna be two screws up in here that are gonna free up this forwardmost little plastic bracket and let you access the front screw. Once you get that loosened up, you can kind of pull it just gently up out of the way, and then that should give you plenty of room to get in here with a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench and free up this front bolt. Now once you have that hardware out of the way, our bracket should easily slide into place and line up with those factory mounting holes and then it can be reinstalled using the factory hardware. Now before you actually bolt this into place, I do want to point out and recommend that you pick up some of this clear paint protection film and put this down against any painted surface that our bracket is going to come into contact with just to prevent any paint damage, scratching, or anything like that over time. Since the vehicle we're working on already has this vinyl applied to the surface, we're not gonna be doing that in this case. Then once you have all this hardware started, you can simply kind of gently push the bracket in against the body and then tighten that back up using your 10 millimeter wrench. Once you have this tight, you can go repeat that process over on the driver's side and then you can lower your soft top back down and reinstall this front factory soft top bracket. Now you can find the 5 16 clip nuts provided in your hardware pack and install them to each of these three side mounting holes. Those should just simply kind of line up and press over the top of that side flange and then you can just kind of center them in those holes. Now you can grab the rear upright and begin installing this to that lower mounting bracket. So for the three mounting holes here on this flange, you're gonna be using 5 16 button head hardware. And then there's gonna be a large hole out on each end of this bracket where you'll use a half inch button head bolt. Now once you have all the hardware for that started, you're gonna need a 5 16 hex driver or Allen wrench for these half inch bolts and a 3 16 for the 5 16 button heads here on the side. So once you have all that hardware started, you wanna make sure to just kind of thread it in as far as you can by hand so this feels fairly secure, like it's not gonna fall down or anything. 
and then go do that same process over on the other side. Next we'll be installing the support brackets for these side uprights. The way these are going to install, you'll need to find these spacers, one for each side. The bracket is going to actually bolt using these slots up on top of the factory roll bar and then these slots here should line up with these two outside holes here on the upright. You'll kind of be sliding this in just below this edge of the soft top here to get those lined up and installed. Now in order to show you the way this bolts and the way the spacer goes in place, we're actually going to fold our soft top back real quick. However, you guys won't need to or want to do that when you're getting these installed because then the bracket will interfere with the side linkage here. So now with the top down, you can see we're going to be working on this rear roll cage cross member. You're going to be looking for these two mounting holes here on either side. These are factory threaded nut inserts that you should have. You want to start with the provided spacer plate that should just drop right down on top of those and kind of nest in there nicely. Then you'll go ahead and grab that support bracket, set it down on top of there and begin threading in the eight millimeter hex head bolts from your hardware pack. You wanna kind of get these just all the way down by hand. That'll kind of hold the spacer from sliding up over the top of those nut inserts, but still allow you to adjust this in and out. Then to attach this bracket to the upright, you'll need to find the 5 16 button head bolts in your hardware pack. They'll go through these two upper holes, line up with the slots on the support bracket, and then on the inside, you're gonna wanna use the 5 16 washer and flange nut to cover that slot. Now the installation for these is gonna be the same over on the other side and you just wanna make sure to leave this hardware a little bit loose for now. So now you can see with the soft top back in place, this is how you'll actually be installing your bracket and you'll just have to access that hardware either through the side here under the soft top or up through the cargo area somewhere in the interior. You can see how that's gonna kinda of sit just above the bracket and then when you slide the window back in place, it'll just kind of nest right between those two sections. Next, we'll move on to installing the rear upper crossbar section. So now you'll be installing this rear cross section. That's gonna mount between the two uprights using the three bolt holes here. They'll line up with the three slots on the uprights, and then you'll install 5 16 hex head hardware there. Make sure you use the washers on the bolt head, and then you'll have 5 16 flange locking nuts for the inside. So once you've got all the hardware for that started by hand, we can begin tightening this whole rear mount assembly in place. So for up here, you'll just need a couple half inch wrenches. Next, you'll work your way down to these button heads. For those, you'll need a 3 16 hex and possibly a half inch wrench to just hold that nut on the back side. Next, you'll need to reach in and tighten that eight millimeter hex head hardware mounting this support bracket in place. Before you actually tighten those down, you just wanna make sure at this time that you kinda of look at the relationship between these uprights and the soft top, as well as the support bracket to the factory roll bar inside of there to just kind of make sure this whole assembly is centered up top here. For these, you'll just need a 13 millimeter wrench. Then lastly, down here at the bottom of the upright, you'll need a 3 16 hex for these three bolts and a 5 16 hex for the two end bolts. Once you have all that hardware tight, you can go ahead and reinstall these rear windows. Now you'll move up to the front of the vehicle where we can begin installing these front mounting brackets. So for these, you're gonna start by removing the plastic factory covers. There's just a little tab that you can push in here at the back of each of these. Then you'll need a 10 millimeter socket to remove the two nuts holding this plastic retainer in place.
After that, the bracket should just sit nice and easily down over those two studs. Now these brackets are side specific, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you have the single slotted side out toward the outside of the vehicle, making this one passenger, this one driver. After that, you're gonna need to modify this retainer as well as the cover a little bit before they can be reinstalled. Now, ours have already been done from a previous install where we had a rack on this vehicle with a hard top. Essentially what you're gonna do is trim everything off of the bottom so that the bottom surface of this is nice and smooth so that it can sit down flat on the top side of our bracket. There should just be, I think it's two tabs that kind of poke off of there and then a little ledge over on this side. Then that should sit down nice and flat. And then for these, you're gonna have to trim some material out of both sides if you wish to reuse them. It's a little bit more that needs to be taken out of the outside versus the inside. So obviously the side kind of gets cut out here. We leave about three eighths to half of an inch on either side to just overhang the front and kind of fill this space out and make it look nice and finished. And then here on the outside, you wind up taking, it's about 3 16 of an inch. It'll be a lot easier to tell once you actually have the mount in place and kind of set this just carefully down over there, how much you're gonna to need to remove from each side. So with the retainer down on top of our bracket, you'll just reinstall the two factory nuts. And tighten those in place. Then once you've trimmed out these outer covers to fit, you can simply snap those back in as well. Now if you're looking for a little bit more detail on how those need to be trimmed, we did cover that fairly well in our hard top roof rack installation video. So you can go check that out and then jump back into this step. With the mounts in place up on the roof, we can move to the front fairing. Now before this can go on, you're gonna to want to install the provided edge lock trim. This is gonna go just along this front edge everywhere that this could come in contact with the painted roof surface. And then we just kind of carry it a little bit past each of these points as well, which is kind of a visual thing, but also kind of just helps lock it on here on these edges. So I'm just gonna start it kind of a little bit inside of the two bolt holes here. That way it's not gonna interfere with the mount once it's up there on the vehicle. And then just work my way along this front edge, pushing it into place. So then once you get down to the other end of the fairing, you can just kind of mark that with your thumb just inside of those other two mounting holes and using some sharp tin snips or something equivalent, just go ahead and cut that off smooth. And then this is like an aluminum impregnated edge lock trim. You just wanna make sure that any of that that comes out of the end gets removed so that it doesn't come into contact with the paint once it's up on the vehicle. With that edge lock trim in place, we can get this front fairing installed to the mounts. So as I kind of mentioned before, this fairing is gonna contact the paint up here above the windshield. So this is another location that you're gonna to wanna to put some of that paint protection film just underneath this edge lock trim up here. Again, this vehicle already had a roof rack on it previously, so we already have ours in place. But basically, you're gonna just bolt your fairing in place up here, kinda of lightly snug it up, push down tight to the paint, and then you can just use like some blue painter's tape, kinda of trace out that edge Pull the fairing off one time and then follow your tape as a guide to get that film in place. Now once you've done that, you're going to want to find the 3 quarter inch long quarter 20 button heads along with the corresponding washers in your bolt pack and then the quarter 20 serrated flange nuts to go here on the back side and that's what you're going to use to secure this fairing to these mounts. Now you can get all six of these mounting bolts in place and just kind of leave them hand tight for now as we get the side rails and crossbars installed. 
Now the side rails can be installed one at a time. These are gonna to mount to the outside of both the rear mounting tab and the front fairing using the same quarter inch hardware that we used up there on the fairing. Now you can jump over and install the driver's side rail and then we can move on to those upper crossbars. So now your crossbars are gonna be threaded on each end to accept more of those quarter 20 button head bolts. Again, using washers on each of those. They're also going to have these slots milled into one end of each crossbar. Those are going to be for the T-nuts that we provide as well as sell so that you can mount any of your gear and accessories up here on the rack. We typically just put those all to the same side, usually the driver's side and facing up so they're easy to access. Now on this rack, we're also going to be installing our diagonal braces between these crossbars in some locations. So you're going to want to start specifically with this rear crossbar by putting two of the provided quarter 20 studs into the back side on each end. And that is what those diagonal braces are gonna to fasten to once the crossbar is in place. So with the studs in place, I've kind of dropped the crossbar here between the rails and lined it up with the corresponding slot. I've got my quarter 20 bolts with these, we're gonna recommend just a little bit of anti-seize lubricant on each bolt as they go into the crossbars, just because these are a stainless bolt into an aluminum crossbar. That should prevent these from seizing in there over time, especially if you live in a rust belt state like we do here in Michigan. You can run these bolts most of the way in, however, leave them just loose enough that you still have this front to rear adjustment in your crossbar to get these diagonal braces installed. Now on the rear fabricated crossbar, you're not obviously not gonna have this machine slot that the aluminum crossbars do to accept those studs. So we provide you with quarter 20 hex hardware for that. You can go ahead and just partially install those so that the slotted diagonal braces can drop down over those before being tightened in place. Now for the stud end, you're gonna have quarter 20 nylon locking nuts that you can again, kind of just pre-install, get those on a couple turns. and then grab your diagonal brace, slide it over the two back bolts, and then line up and slide it over these two front studs. Now to tighten these in place, you're just gonna need a 716 socket with maybe a small extension on a ratchet so that you can reach all the way in to that inside bolt and or nut if you're out here on the crossbar side. You may need a 7 16 wrench as well if that nut's not biting into this fabricated crossbar back here. Once you have that tight, that kind of sets the distance between each of these crossbars. So you can come back with a 5 30 seconds hex and tighten these button head bolts. And when you're installing the next crossbar, you're gonna to wanna to put those quarter 20 studs in the front side here on the slot. We're basically gonna be putting one of these diagonal braces in every other crossbar location. So you have a gap here, brace here, and so on as we move forward on the rack. So if you've installed all those correctly, your rack should wind up looking just like ours does here. Now we can move on to tightening this front fairing. So for that, you just wanna make sure that this is pushed down tight to the roof surface. And then with your 5 30 seconds hex, tighten these in place. Then lastly, we can adjust this side rail height as well as tighten those in place. So here you just wanna make sure that you have adequate clearance between the side rail and the top, especially 
to accommodate the weight once you get any of your gear installed and that it also kind of runs parallel to the top edge. So I'm going to go ahead and just lift this up here and again with that 530 seconds tighten these three bolts. Then I'll just do the same thing with the two rear side rail bolts to finish things up. Just be sure to go repeat that process over on the other side. So that's it for this roof rack install. If you guys have any questions about this installation or any other product we offer here at JCR, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can email us at info at jcroffroad.com or give us a call at 269-353-1184.